Check this little guy out. This is the new NanoFly 20 made by Sub250. It's a tiny 1S freestyle drone that weighs about 50 grams with a battery on it. And for a 1S drone this size, this thing is pretty quick and it actually surprised me with how good it is at freestyle. All right, so let's do a quick unboxing and then we'll go over some specs and then we're gonna take this thing out for a test flight. Comes in this clear container. Here's the drone. Underneath the foam, you get a bag of spare props. You get a little screwdriver so you can work on the drone if you have to. We have a PH 2.0 to, I believe this is GNB 2.7 connector. That's the type of connector that this drone takes. And then you have a little user manual. All right, so to use the drone, you're obviously gonna need a battery. Like I said, this is a GNB 2.7 connector, so you're not gonna be able to use a battery like this with a PH 2.0 connector. You do have this adapter, and this adapter is pretty much for uh, Sub 250's 1S LiPos that I have here. They actually sent me two of these, and I don't have a charger for this, but luckily with this adapter, I can plug this into the battery. And now I can charge this using one of my older, I think I got this with like a Tiny Hawk or something, but this has a little um, PH 2.0 charger right there. And I can just plug it in right like this. And I can charge these batteries. If you don't have a charger like this, you can get a charger that's for these batteries right on Sub 250's site. But you're gonna have to buy the batteries and the charger separate. So the drone comes in a couple different configurations. You can go with the built-in SPI ELRS 2.4 gigahertz receiver or a TBS receiver. You can also get this with a Walksnail VTX, an HD0 VTX, or you can use the built-in 200 milliwatt analog VTX. The version that I have here is the analog TBS version. Looking at the drone on the top, we have this TPU piece that holds the camera and kind of just protects the all-in-one board and the camera that's in the middle here. It's pretty solid. It doesn't have a lot of flex. I mean, it's TPU, so it's gonna have some flex, but for a 3D printed part, it doesn't have a lot, so it feels like it'll be pretty durable. Um, in between the TPU and the flight controller, there's a clear bracket, and that's kind of acting as a sled. I don't know if you guys can see this, but the TBS receiver is kind of just attached to that. So the flight controller is called the Red Fox A1. They include this little wiring diagram. So if you guys are interested in what kind of UARTs and what kind of pads you're working with, this is the diagram for that. The ESCs that are built into this board are five amps and come preloaded with BlueJay already installed. Personally, I have BlueJay on all of my drones that are running BL Heli S. If you don't have BlueJay installed on your drones, I would highly recommend it, but this drone comes with it already installed, so that's nice. The VTX that's built into this flight controller is capable of 200 milliwatts of output power, so we'll be able to get some decent range out of this thing. And even though I have the TBS version here, you can see the TBS receiver is attached to the sled, like I said, uh, but regardless of if you get the TBS version or not, you're gonna have the 2.4 gigahertz ELRS receiver uh, built into this board, and this is the antenna for that. The camera right here is the Caddx Ant Eco. The frame seems pretty solid. It's carbon fiber and it's about 1.5 millimeters thick. I like how they have the motor wires wrapped around these carbon fiber arms to keep the wires nice and tidy against the frame. Hopefully you guys can see that right there. They kind of have it coiled around. The motors plug right in, so if you do have to replace a motor, it's relatively easy. The motors that are on here are Sub 250's 1002 21,000 kV motors with tri-blade props. So on the bottom, you have this little TPU piece right here and this holds the battery. It's a bottom mounted battery, so you have nice uh, center of gravity on this thing. The battery just slides right in here and this holds it nice and snug. So the battery slides in right like that. And then you can plug this in right like that. Oh, we got some nice LEDs on top. I didn't know that. Looks like red and green LEDs. I'm sure that those will change color once we have it bound to the receiver or something. So since this is a pre-built quad, this thing is pretty much ready to go. I'm gonna go get this bound up with my uh, controller. I'll plug it into Betaflight, make sure my switches are all set up correctly, and we'll take this thing out for a test flight.
All right, so I just got back from flying this thing and I gotta say for a 1S two inch drone, this thing has some solid power and is a lot of fun to fly. It has more speed than I was anticipating. It's very fun to fly outside and is pretty stable. I noticed a couple uh, bobbles and a little bit of prop wash, but otherwise the tune does feel pretty good. I may play with it a little bit just to see if I can remove that prop wash, but overall I am satisfied with the tune on it. Um, I crashed this multiple times into cement and it continued to fly. I was able to fly away from every single crash. I'll put a little, I'll put a little um, crash compilation up here so you guys can see all the different crashes that I did with this thing. All of them are into cement or a wooden table. And really the only damage that was done was to the lipo and this is barely damage. It's basically just the this plastic shielding that wraps around the battery. Uh, that got ripped up but otherwise the drone's fine i was able to fly away from every single crash the frame is still completely intact the motors are good props are good uh, nothing broke in any of these crashes so overall very durable has really good speed for a 1s like i said it's pretty quiet and i think that ha i think that that has to do with the 1002 uh, motors that they put on this with the tri-blade props i like that sub 250 is offering this drone in different uh, vtx configuration so you can get it with the analog vtx like i have here or you can get it with the walk snail or hd0 vtx obviously if you get one of those you're going to be dealing with an additional board probably in this stack that is going to add an additional 10 to 15 grams so it'll probably affect the type of freestyle you're able to do so i think if you're getting this for freestyle you'll probably want to go with the analog version it is cool to see quads coming out with hd options in this size just for reference i know i mentioned the weight already but with a battery, you're looking at 50 grams. And then without a battery, so dry weight, you're looking at 37 grams. So very, very light little drone. And like I said, if you went with the HD0 or walk sandal, you're probably looking at an additional 10, 15 grams or so. So overall, highly recommended as an indoor or outdoor whoop. I think that this would be a great little drone for some indoor racing. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and if you have any questions about the NanoFly 20, leave a comment down below.